American biotech company Colossal Biosciences, Biosciences has made a surprise announcement. They claim that they have brought the dire wolf back from the dead, achieving the company's first successful de-extinction. It's seen as a massive step for the company that's also working on reviving the woolly mammoth, the dodo, and the Tasmanian tiger. CTV science and tech expert Dan Riskin is back. Dan, we had to talk about this. You and I have already talked about the mouth, mouse slash mammoth. Yeah. So now dire wolves. Um, let's talk about these wolves. It's been over 13,000 years since they walked to Earth. Your reaction to this successful experiment? It is a successful experiment. I think calling it a de-extinction is an oversell. And, and, and let me explain why. When we spoke last time, we were talking about the same company and they have these mice they were calling woolly mice. And they were saying, it's just like a woolly mammoth. And, and look, how it, look how it looks like a mammoth. And at first glance, you think they've taken mammoth DNA and put it into a mouse. But it turned out that was just a genetically modified mouse that kind of reminded people of a mammoth. So forget that. But now the same company is showing these wolves and saying dire wolves. Now, a dire wolf is not the same as a gray wolf like we have in Algonquin Park. A dire wolf is an extinct predator that used to take down mammoths 13,000 years ago. They were big, had massive teeth, massive skulls, very scary monsters from the past that have been gone a long time. And we have isolated DNA from those dire wolves that look like wolves, but they're not that close. I mean, they're dogs, they're in the dog family, but they're not that close to these wolves. It's not like a a dog and a wolf are very, very, very close. A dire wolf is something different, sort of like a jackal is different from a wolf. But anyway, the dire wolf, they found its DNA. So what they've done here is they've taken some wolves, like normal wolves that you would find in Algonquin Park, and they have genetically modified them. They put 20 different genes from a dire wolf into a gray wolf. And so what you have is a gray wolf with 20 modified genes in it that are the dire wolf genes. Now, wolves have you know billions of base pairs. And so can you say, well, we've picked 20, and because we put those in this wolf, now we can say that it's, it's a dire wolf? It'd be like if I gave you a mountain lion and I took 20 genes from an African lion and put it in there and said, look, it's an African lion. You'd say, well, no, it's, it's something else. I mean, it's not a normal mountain lion, but it's not an mm. African lion. It's something else. And that's kind of what we've got here. Okay, so that's what they did. We're gonna talk now about whether they should, uh, but I wanna show you this. This is a, a, a tweet uh, on X from <laughs> Jurassic <laughs> World that says, we see no possible way this could go wrong. So Dan, your thoughts on, yeah, maybe we can do it. Should we do this? Do we even have the habitat to support some of these mm extinct creatures your thoughts yeah i mean it's interesting for sure dire wolves uh you know they roamed north america and parts of south america and they took down things like mammoths those big mammoths aren't walking around anymore so they don't really fit in the modern ecosystem but these aren't really dire wolves either there's something different so i think we're, we're learning a lot from this uh, i think the jurassic park example is a very good one i think that's a great idea um, to, to, to make those connections and think about the fact that we are playing with fire a little bit. But honestly, I, I mean, I don't see a scenario where the three that they've created that are in a locked up facility somewhere hidden in North America, they're not telling people where, are going to break free and learn how to open door handles and take out little kids in Jeeps. I don't think that's where this is going. <laughs> what? No, I guess they didn't think that with Jurassic Park either. Right. Well, they made the cover of Time magazine. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then my last question is, should the, the time, money, and resources be spent on preserving the species that are already um, at risk, Dan? Right. I mean, that's, that's a great question. And you can use these same technologies to bring things back from the brink. And so these kinds of technologies can be used to save black-footed ferrets, to, uh, to, you know, you take uh, Florida panthers, for example, which is a, a very rare form of mountain lion. You know, using genetic techniques, you can try to boost these things. But above and beyond anything else, these animals just need habitat. And so uh, there are a lot of people that feel like we're putting the cart before the horse. Let's not work on how to bring things back until we learn how to save the stuff we do have. It's a little bit like destroying the Earth so we can go live on Mars. It's, it's, it's foolish to think that Mars is ever going to be a replacement for Earth, and it's foolish to think that we can just sort of 
bring things back out of extinction like we're ordering off a menu as we destroy biodiversity today. So uh, a lot of people really pointing out this, this really is uh, an exciting, interesting piece, but it's not uh, a path forward for conservation by any stretch of the imagination. Dan Riskin for us. Dan, great to see you as always. Thank you.